Here's Sang Hoon Jin, far side circle, finds the trailer, and Sylvester, he scores! Oh, what a rocket from number 16. Not in front pass save by Harmon. Lead for Mitsulinski, he's in on a breakaway, he scores! The cabaret is shot, stopped by Harmon. The rebound came out, oh, and Harmon with the denial. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Atlanta Gladiators podcast from the Business Radio X studios. Liam Godimer here, the Director of Broadcasting and Communications for the team. Alongside me is the Chief Revenue Officer, Steve Brown, and the Gladiators Captain, Jacob Graves. Guys, how are we doing? Liam, what's going on, my friend? <laughs> Nothing Doing much. good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, each of you, and it's an exciting time for the Gladiators and the fans because we're 4-0-0. For the first time since 2007, 2008. Jacob, take me through this great start for the club. Uh, I think we just got everyone buying in right now. Everyone's working hard, listening to the coach, you know, keeping it simple. That's it. Yeah, for sure. And Steve, from the business side and uh, from the hockey fan side, I know you're a fan, so. Yeah, no, uh, off, to, off to a great start. We had a uh, couple, couple different records that we broke on, on opening night, uh, especially with the amount of groups that we had come into the building. So, you know, early on in the season for us as well, definitely working on a few things and continuing to uh, make the fan experience the best that it can be. But uh, couldn't couldn't ask for a better start, both on and off the ice. For sure, Jacob, you uh, come back to the Gladiators this off season. I gotta ask, what is the allure of Atlanta, and why did you want to come back to this team? Uh, if I'm being honest, just being in the South is a lot better. Being <laughs> up north in the cold, and uh, Nezzy's a good player coach. You know, takes care of the players. And uh, he put a good team around uh, me, so I'm very happy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, we're very happy to have you. And right on the precipice of the regular season, you're named the next captain of the Glads. Take me through your emotions when uh, that was announced, and how do you feel to be leading this group? Uh, I was honored, honestly, because Nezzy was the last captain as well. And uh, yeah, honestly, words can't even explain how pumped I was when he told me that. So yeah. How'd you find out? Um, well, there was little murmurs that it might happen, but I wasn't, I wasn't too sure. And then when we were at practice, uh, after one of the practices, the boys were kneeling down and then he said the captains and the boys were all tapping their sticks. It was uh, pretty special. Excellent. Yeah, that's gotta be pretty awesome, uh, for sure. Um, and you mentioned Derek Nesbitt, uh, Jacob, just what's it been like to uh, play under him? Of course, a first year head coach alongside Eric Neely, who retires after this past season, just what's that dynamic like? And of course, with the great start, I mean, couldn't have asked for anything better, huh? Yeah, honestly, they're, they're both awesome. They get it. They were all, they were both players. I play with both of them. So they really understand the game and, uh, they're letting the boys play, you know, no one's gripping their stick too tight and, uh, you know, it's showing, so. It's all good. Yeah, for sure. And let's backtrack to opening night, Steve. That is, uh, you know, our first official theme night for the Gladiators, of course, promoting the rival Savannah Ghost Pirates. And the Gladiators come out with the 6-3 to three win, a crowd, you know, north of 5,500 fans at Gas South Arena. What was that like for you? Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. Um, obviously, a bunch of changes in the offseason on the business side for us. So a uh, whole new staff. Everybody's getting familiar with you know, with gas stealth, with the fan base, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if it's, is it really a rivalry with Savannah if we keep winning every time? But. I think it's 10-3 uh, and 1-0, oh, and oh, I believe the record okay. is, sure. all time. I don't know if that's a rivalry, but <laughs> inter interstate squad, I guess. Uh, but no, it was, uh, it was great. Um, you know, I, I think one of my favorite things, one of the first things that I planned on doing when I got here was flipping the benches. And I think that made a big difference of having a packed crowd down there on the side that we shoot twice on. Um, you know, it was nice to, to get that new Lion's Den feature going. We're still trying to fill that. So if you guys are interested in sitting with the rowdiest fans uh, in the arena, get yourself uh, some seats there with the Lion's Den. Um, but it, it was great to see that. We had almost every fan experience uh, happen. So a lot of different schools were involved. Um, you know, just a, a bunch of groups. We had a mom's group come out and do a high five tunnel there with the team. So a um, lot of new fans coming into the Gladiators fan universe, which is, which is great. And as we're uh, approaching the middle of the season, of course, theme nights and more exciting uh, things related to the Gladiators are uh, forthcoming. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, so uh, first first one that we got coming up is going to be the Georgia Georgia Tech game. So for everyone listening, we did just change the start time to twelve thirty this coming Sunday, the November fifth. 
but this is something that we look to build as we continue to grow hockey here in, in uh, Georgia. So these two teams, obviously it's a pretty heavy rivalry in, in all the sports being uh, as close as they are. Um, but Coach Roberts and, and Coach Camp have been working with us and you know we've been doing everything we can to get as many students to come out. Um, and enjoy this game and you know, hopefully we continue to grow this, you know I think there's talks like next year. We'll probably move this more towards uh, February So we continue to grow this with the the student base um, But it's exciting, you know, they they're playing in a, a bigger building and this will probably be one of the biggest crowds that they play in for the whole season so that game will take place right before um, before the gladiators we've got our education day game that's going to be happening on uh, November 14th. So we'll have a 10.30 a.m. puck drop, and we have over 2,000 students that are going to be coming in. We'll change everything to be much more like education-based. Uh, we got Gobble Wobble the uh, night before Thanksgiving. That's the heaviest uh, drinking night of the year, uh, so I've been told. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll focus on that $5 uh, beer promotion that we have. That'll be every Wednesday game that we have throughout the year. Um, and then, you know, I'd say the big one here before the, the turn of the, uh, the new year is going to be our teddy bear toss, which will be on the 16th of December. Um, you know, I, Jacob, I'm, I'm sure you've been a part of a bunch of these type of games before, but that, that seems to be a huge crowd favor. I think we had over 15,000 teddy bears that we were able to donate to several different organizations last year so really excited um you know obviously we've got some some regular games that'll be happening throughout there as well so we encourage everybody to come out and watch as much gladiator hockey as possible and let's go back to the first <clears throat> game that you mentioned and that's georgia day of course coming up uh this upcoming sunday november 5th uh jacob my question for you is uh, for somebody who has had multiple stints here uh with atlanta how have you seen the game of hockey grow um from the time you first got here uh, up until now well, I think that it's getting a little more popular. I mean, it's tough down south anywhere, really, for hockey. I don't know what it is, but, yeah, it's definitely growing down here. You can tell over at the ice form and whatnot that it's, uh, it's definitely growing. Yeah, for sure. And then Steve also mentions the teddy bear toss. I got a question. Steve and I were discussing it in the car uh, prior to entering the studios. I need to know, Jacob, have you ever scored a teddy bear toss goal? No. Uh, this is my year. <laughs> this is your year? <laughs> Shot call. <laughs> yeah, there's high expectations after uh, Reese Vitelli last year uh, scored 51 seconds in uh, to the Teddy Bear Toss He'll probably game. do that again. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have everybody in the building. At the I know. Time. Yeah, so... Hopefully, will uh, people at least be in their seats this year? Yeah, for sure. I was still going through my opening monologue on the uh, on the broadcast before I knew it. Uh, the puck was uh, past the Cincinnati goaltender there. Um, and again, we just talk about the theme nights in general. And uh, Jacob, you know, this is another fun question. Um, when you're wearing those specialty jerseys, whether it's Marvel Night or, of course, Georgia Day, we'll be wearing our special. Oh, we're not. We're wearing our alternate our uh, alternate yellow we're jerseys. We're debuting our yellow jerseys, Georgia is actually going to be debuting their new alternate jersey as well, which I saw a picture of that yesterday. It looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Is there a competition with the boys, you know, when we have those uh, post-game auctions to see uh, whose jersey sells the most? Or? Yeah, like low man on the totem pole, I got to go uh, uh, drag the gear around or something? The boys are definitely asking each other what they're sold for. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm sure if someone gets in a fight that game, their jersey's going to go for a little more, but... Uh, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of competition with that. Do you know what the most one of your jerseys has gone for? One of mine? Yeah. Oh, probably $2. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> mine don't go for much. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's gone for a little bit more than that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had one with a C in two two seasons, right? Yeah, I know. That's going to be uh, very, very Maybe $4? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Doubling it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, on that note, Jacob, you know, talking about being the captain of this group, obviously a very young Gladiators team, a lot of the veteran leadership from this past season no longer with the team. Just what's that like, you know, being one of the veterans amidst, uh, you know, a group of, of rookies, essentially? I really didn't realize how old I was until <laughs> these guys came in and started saying the years they were born. And I looked over at Sly, I'm like, wait, I'm like the third oldest on the team here. And so it's definitely a little bit of a change, but uh, they're all awesome kids. Like they're all nice and they all work so hard. None of them are entitled. So uh, yeah, we got a really good team. 
Yeah, for sure. And uh, again, I think it's the rookies that have really been helping, you know, forge this uh, hot start for the Gladiators. And again, let's recap the regular season. We talked about Savannah and the excitement of night one, and you're able to get the victory in that game. But then you guys traveled to Allen, Texas for your first road trip of the season, uh, a 6-3 to three win on a Saturday night, and then a 6 nothing shutout on Sunday afternoon. Can you take me through that weekend? Uh, very good goaltending to start. Oh, we'll um, talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I think we were really excited to get in there and obviously we're going in there one and know, but I think we wanted to, uh, show people what we got and, uh, we're doing that. So going on the road and getting four points was huge. And Steve, you were there, uh, this weekend in Allen. So how I, was your experience? <clears throat> I did. I, uh, I got to travel in and uh, I caught the, the Saturday game. So uh, it was, I was a little quiet in the crowd when it was three to one, but uh, there was myself and one season ticket holder also made the trip. Uh, so we were definitely the loudest people over there on the other side of the ice there to, to end the game. So it was awesome to see. You know, don't really expect, I think, what, 11 unanswered goals uh, yeah. between the two games. So uh, they have a great barn. It was it was a opening night for them. They, they did draw against the World Series uh, on opening night, but I believe they had a sellout. Um, so it, it was fun to go into uh, enemy territory and actually get to be a fan at a game. <laughs> and uh, watch what was going on. Definitely a different change of pace for you. Uh, <laughs> and again, on Sunday afternoon, Jacob, we'll get to the goaltending, but for you personally, uh, the Glads had three shorthanded goals. They're one of 38 teams in ECHL history to do that in one game. Uh, and you could have made it four shorthanded uh, goals. You had a penalty shot there. Uh, you put on subject. a good move. That was a, that, that was a good <laughs> save there by uh, Perry. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I came back to the bench, and I told them, I'm like, I don't have to take this, do I? Like, I can sub someone out to take the <laughs> shot for me. They're all like, you're taking the shot. I'm like, uh-oh. So did you just not know what movie you were going to make until the moment? Or uh, I knew like? I was going to fake the shot, and hopefully the goalie was going to bite a little bit harder. But, uh, yeah, I'm just not a penalty shot guy is what it is. <laughs> how, how often do you guys practice something like that? Uh, we do do shootouts a little bit, okay. but... Yeah, not enough practice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, later in that game, Gustav's Grigals. I mean, that is one of the most insane saves uh, I've seen since, of course, calling Gladiators games. First, your reaction, Jacob, uh, from the bench. Uh, from the bench, I had no idea where the puck was. I thought for sure it went in the net, but then their guy didn't celebrate. So then it was like, I still didn't understand. And then 15 seconds later, I'm like, wow, he saved that. And I thought it was like impossible. So that was crazy. Yeah, you and me both. And Steve, uh, were you on your way back uh, at that point or still in Texas? Where, where uh, were you I, I was still in Texas, but I, uh, I was excited to see all over X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, social media, uh, your extremely loud call of, of the save. <laughs> and I think that also, uh, with the play and the call, made its way on the Sports Center. I think it was number six on the top ten. It was. So, uh, pretty cool for an ECHL team to, to make the mainstream media like that. Well, you know what? I was calling that game remotely. And uh, you know what? You got to generate your own excitement when you're calling it from the computer screen. And I, again, I could not believe it. Um, yeah, it was definitely a so crazy moment. Liam will be joining you guys on the road for most of the closer trips. But when he, uh, you know, Texas or when you guys go to Twa or whatever, he calls from home and uh, he actually throws the suit on inside the apartment and gets in the zone and, and makes the call from the, uh, the kitchen table and that's no hyperbole i i do <laughs> good for you yeah wow. you know what you gotta be in the element right yeah, you know you. <laughs> and you know what if you look good you feel good uh and you call a game well <laughs> um go. so that's just kind of where i was at with that but i'm definitely excited to be joining you guys on the road for select games uh this year but going back to gustav's grigal's save i texted nezzy you know and i texted you as well the sports center top 10 highlight you said the boys have seen it nezzy said that you guys were in the restaurant together all seeing it together oh there's a little bit of a a spur of the moment thing take me through that uh yeah we we're all just sitting there watching the top 10 and then on come the gladiators and we we're all freaking out goose wasn't there at the restaurant with us oh, but yeah we would have lost a little <laughs> more but yeah we were all celebrating pretty hard in that restaurant were you guys like hoping like were you watching sports center like oh, just no. waiting on the top 10 or it just popped up on the tv though? i mean you rarely see echl top yeah. 10 so 
Uh, no, no, we were not looking for it. <laughs> and uh, where, when did you see it on uh, on ESPN, Steve? Uh, I woke up on Monday morning after getting in very late, and I think you had texted into the uh, the office group chat. So, uh, but no, that was uh, that was <laughs> immediately. Pretty, yeah, that was a pretty cool thing to to wake up to and see. So, um, you know, I think we made it on ESPN for the Blues Clues jersey yes, last year. Um, and then obviously Anson helps us out being on like TNT and, and things like that. So, but always awesome for us to get some natural, uh, notoriety. Yeah, absolutely. And for me personally, when I saw the top 10 save, uh, you know, I, uh, I couldn't believe it. And it was very good to see the gladiators, uh, on that platform. Uh, but Jacob, um, going back just to the season thus far overall, I mean, you combine Gustav's Grigals' save, the start that you guys have had four O and O the four shorthanded goals up to this point. I mean, you've had an established career. Have you ever really seen a start like this? I mean, there's so many, you know, different va- variables to this team as to why they're having so much success. And you know, I just want to know, just from the player's perspe- perspective, what you see. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, no, I have not seen a start like this. Uh, it's definitely nice, but we are only four games in, so don't want to get complacent, obviously. And uh, we still got to keep playing the right way. I mean, we all we have all the pieces of the puzzle, and, you know, it's just when some guys get called up, when that happens. I think we have other guys to fill those roles, so we're looking good, but uh, definitely don't want to get complacent. We touched on uh, Nezzy a little bit earlier. I mean, just what's how do the boys feel about this torrid start and about how Nezzy has been able to implement uh, his coaching style alongside uh, Eric Neely? Just what's that been like? And are you a little bit surprised that, you know, it's been such a seamless transition for a brand new coach? Uh, well, no, I think they both love the game. So, you know, Nezzy's always talking the game. He loves talking about it. So, I mean, it's no surprise to me that they're both great coaches and, uh, it's also no surprise to me that we're having a good start. I mean, everyone's buying in. For sure. And I'm going to save this question for the end. Jacob, take me through your fight last night okay. uh, against Mark Lewis. Because uh, for me, it seemed a little staged. You guys were scare, uh, squaring each other off there for, for quite a while. Yeah, so he, we were up 2 nothing, and he asked me to fight. And I said, uh, I made a deal. I said, if you guys come back and tie this game, I have no problem fighting. But I don't want to give you guys any momentum. So... They got two quick ones, and then that's when I was like, I looked back at Nezzy, I'm like, I think I'm going to grab that big guy. (laughs) And then I went out there, and he was out there for like 20 seconds, and he was like, uh, I went up to him, and I was already committed at this point. He's like, I'm too tired, I'm too tired. I'm like, all right, well, my gloves are off. So he, he took his gloves off, and then when we were standing there, I'm like, just take your breath. Like, if you're that tired, take your breath, and then we can fight. So that's why we stood there. You threw so you threw your glove into like the two hundred level. Like that, yeah. that was like way up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then we went at it. That's what's up. And then you know, yeah. uh, after the fight was over, I saw a little sign of mutual respect, a little tap on the uh, on the arm there. I think he was happy that I uh, let him get his breath. He was just saying thank you for that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think that's a thing with fighters. You do have that mutual respect. Obviously, you say what you're going to say, but at the end of the day, it's respect. Yeah. Oh. So all right, quick question. Did you know the rule that you then got penalized two minutes for? No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read that rule book every year. He, the refs tried telling me that it's been a rule for a couple of years, but I swear I take my old pad off every fight. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah, so for everyone listening, uh, Jacob was given an extra two minutes there for taking off the elbow pad, which I've been a hockey fan for a long time. I don't, I don't know if I've ever heard that as the announcement before. I don't before. see why that's a rule. <laughs> How did they come and explain that to you? Was you know, when you're I, sitting in the box? Or, well, no. I was, was at the end of the period? It was right? at the end of the period. Off. So, yeah, the boys came in. I'm like, uh, I forget. I think it was Sly that told me. He's like, yeah, they gave you an extra two for your elbow pad. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> did we kill the penalty? <laughs> but we did. And, yeah, but uh, I've learned my lesson. And I will keep it on. <laughs> and then the Glads had a flurry uh, in that third period. We talk about starts that you haven't seen before in your career. Just take me through that third period. I mean, that was absolutely wild to call, I'm sure, to watch. But how was it to play? I, I mean, I wasn't playing. I watched all those goals go in from the penalty box, which was crazy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that was a crazy third. I have not seen anything like that. <laughs> that was wild. 
Yeah, a lot of goals in uh, in quick succession there. But the Gladiators come out with the 7-4 to four win, exactly what you like to see. And before we end this episode of the Atlanta Gladiators podcast, let's take a look uh, into the rest of this week, just opponent-wise. We have the Jacksonville Icemen on Friday night uh, at 7.30 p.m. Um, what makes Jacksonville uh, so difficult to play against, going back to the last time uh, that you were here? Obviously, a little bit of a different group. But again, that South Division mentality kind of goes from top to bottom. I mean, it's tough to say because we haven't played. I watched a little bit of their film, but we haven't played them too much, or we haven't played them obviously yet. So I really don't know what to expect. I just know that we're going to come ready to go and want to keep our streak alive. And obviously, they're playing Soko right now, and I think Soko was up. So we'll see what happens. But if they go undefeated, uh, we're definitely going to want to take another team down there. So. I think Jacob's got the game feed there uh, on his yeah, phone. Yeah, right on the floor, of course. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Always watching, needs to keep an eye on what's going on in the South Division. And again, just on that note with the South Division, of course, you know, you're so happy to be back with the Gladiators, but the South Division is known um, for being a very tough, physical division. And how do you think your presence is going to help uh, this group of young guys when they go toe-to-toe against Jacksonville, South Carolina, Florida, and the rest of the division? Well, we got some, uh, I think we got some guys that can take care of themselves. Obviously, I'll help them out whenever and stick up for them, uh, no matter what. But we got some big boys, and we got Cass Berry, too. I mean, and we, all these young guys, they're in great shape, too, on our team. So I think we're good. I don't really need to do too much defending. One last fun question for each of you, and we'll start with you, Steve. What's one thing that our fans wouldn't know about Steve Brown by listening to this podcast? Uh, I'm the best terrible golfer that you will ever play golf with. Gotcha. <laughs> Haven't played golf with you yet, but I'm looking forward to it. We'll get, we'll get out on the links. <laughs> we'll get there. And, uh, Jacob, what about you? Um, I love my dogs. I love my three dogs. What breed? Uh, two King Charles and a Golden Retriever. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Man's best friend right there. Yeah, they are. Maybe I, we'll have uh, King Charles races instead of the uh, wiener dog races. I don't know. I'll bring them out. Yeah. You got to get Otto out there, yeah, uh, yeah. Steve. I've got a GSP and a mix, and that, that thing is the bane of my existence right now. <laughs> Steve, fun fact, Steve uh, bought one of the brand new uh, beanies uh, at the Gladiators team store. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, Steve, do you want to uh, explain what happened to the uh, top of there? It, uh, I walked into the office, and Liam was like, where did you get the, the beanie without a pom-pom? And uh, <laughs> my dog ate the pom-pom off of it. So I have a one-of-a-kind Gladiators beanie that I have at home. So Nice, personalized. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> and Steve, uh, just real quick before we end, do you want to uh, explain to uh, those listening where you can get tickets for our upcoming home games? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, biggest thing that we're pushing fans on um, is to be able to save on uh, those pesky ticket fees when purchasing single game tickets so you know a family of four going to come out to three games really makes sense to to hop on and get a flex pack um it's the most affordable way help save on parking and concession stands as well so we had a lot of benefits in for for people who are going to be committing and coming out to uh, a bunch of games to watch jacob and these guys continue the streak so uh but yeah just go to atlantagladiators.com there's a ticket tab uh fill out an info request form and uh, a account executive will reach out and, and walk you through all the options, as well as, um, you know, anybody coming with a group of 10 or more. We have a lot of awesome fan experiences, locker room tours, photos down on the ice. We had a group last night that did slap shots. It was a church that came out. Um, and we have our new uh, ice boxes that are, are really great for entertaining a large group and being right there on the glass. So a lot of cool options and a lot of new stuff to come this year as well. Well, Steve, Jacob, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of the Atlanta Gladiators podcast. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, Liam. You can find the Atlanta Gladiators podcast wherever you get your podcasts or in video version on YouTube. We'll see you next time right here on the Atlanta Gladiators podcast.